Tonight I'll be ministering on hands up. And Wednesday night I'm going to be preaching on the courage of a believer. The courage of a believer. This morning I'm preaching on something I've never preached on. And I don't know if I've ever heard anybody else preach on it. And it's very, very common. So we should have preached on this a long time ago. And my title is Being a Bold Believer. Are you a bold believer? Are you a cringing, shrinking violet? <laughs> Do you fade into the shadows? Amen. Do you hesitate? But you don't want to. You want to be bold. Well, today we're going to talk about boldness. I believe God wants us as the people of God and the children of God. He wants us to be bold in our stand and bold in our testimony. I've shared with you before. I've seen it happen over and over again. There's nothing like a testimony that's real to touch somebody's heart, especially an unbeliever because People can argue with your philosophy, your theology, even your worldview, but they cannot argue with your personal experience that you've had. Amen. There was an old song, gospel song that used to be sung, I was there when it happened, and I guess I ought to know. So if you were there, you've got something to testify about. Hallelujah. How many of you remember when you got saved? How many of you remember when you got filled with the Holy Spirit? Do you remember when you got healed? Oh, yes, we remember. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord is talking to us today about being a bold believer. Now, boldness is courage. It's strength. Boldness is bravery. Boldness is confidence. Fearlessness. You know, as I said that word bravery, I, the thought flashed in my mind about the Christians in Iran and Iraq, but Iran that have gone to jail, been persecuted, had their heads cut off, burned alive in cages because they were bold enough to testify. And you know what? They had, I don't, diminish what they suffered. But I want to tell you, they died as martyrs and they had a martyr's victory and a martyr's crown that was waiting for them. Amen. Amen. Now, in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 1, it says, Who is as the wise man and who knows the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom makes his face to shine and the boldness of his face shall be changed. I've read that scripture. I never really studied it until yesterday. But who's wise? Who's knowledgeable? Who's sensible and informed? And who knows? Who perceives the interpretation or the solution of something, anything, of a matter? A man's wisdom, a man's knowledge and perception makes his face to shine. I really thought about that. I meet believers, and they, before they say, or if they never say anything to me, I can tell by their countenance that they know the Lord Jesus Christ. There's something about it. Remember when the Bible says they could tell the people had been in the presence of Jesus. They'd been with Jesus. Why would that be? There was something about their countenance. I want my countenance to be a testimony. I want my, you know, used to, used to, we thought our face showed it if we didn't wear any makeup. And then I had to get amused when the style became that we didn't wear makeup. And then how was anybody going to tell we're a Christian? By the shine on our face. It's not the makeup on your face. It's the shine of the presence of the Spirit of God that's on the inside of you. It shows up. It shows up. Amen. And people can see it. People can see it. It says uh, he makes his face to shine. That means glow and stand out. And the boldness of his face shall be changed. In other words, it alters your appearance. The glory of God, the presence of God, amen, uh, alters your appearance. Now, there, are there times 
maybe perhaps you like me, that you wish you had more boldness. How many of you would say yes? I would like to have more boldness. There's times that later on I thought, I wish I had said this or I wish I had said that. And if I get another chance, I'll say it. And then you get another chance and you don't say. But, you know, I believe there's a key to being bold. You don't want to just say anything. You want to say the right thing. So you don't want to be audacious, but you do want to be bold for the glory of God. Now, in Acts, the fourth chapter, in the eighth verse, it says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the key, number one. If you're going to speak for the Lord, if you're going to give your testimony, or you're going to be bold with, uh, you know, for the Lord, and you're going to speak up for God, number one, let me give you the first key, be full of the Holy Ghost. There's a scripture, I right now I can't think where it is. I should have looked it up, but it, it said they, they perceived that they were full of the Holy Ghost. It says, be full of the Holy Ghost. Peter being full said, you rulers of the people of Israel, be it known to you and all of Israel, that the name of, by the name of Jesus Christ, they're talking about the man that had been healed by the gate, said by the name of Jesus, uh, this, is the, this man was raised up. You crucified Jesus, but this man stands before you whole. Neither is there salvation. That word salvation means deliverance, healing, and victory. There's not any victory or healing in any other name, for there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, made whole, or uh, restored to health. Now, when they saw the boldness, people can see your boldness even before you speak. And it, when you start to speak, if you're full of the Holy Spirit, people will see the Spirit of God on you and in you. It said they saw the boldness. And that word boldness means fearlessness, confidence, courage, and assurance. Freedom to speak. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and understood they were unlearned and ignorant men, they were uneducated, they marveled and they took knowledge that they had been with Jesus. When Peter, they spoke up. This was the Peter that was so shy and couldn't say anything and uh, uh, was just timid. But after the day of Pentecost, after he got filled with the Holy Spirit, he became bold Peter, bold John, bold Matthew, bold Stephen. They were full of courage. And they called the men and they commanded them not to speak. This, uh, this is almost humorous. Can you imagine uh, commanding someone filled with the Holy Spirit and fire and commanding them not to speak anymore? That's like, uh, have you ever taken a garden hose and you forgot to screw on the nozzle that would make it spray and you tried to screw it on after, after you turned the water on? You turn the water, you got a hose, and you're trying to, and it goes, the water going, because you can't do it. You can't cap that thing once it starts. Well, that's the way God wants us to be with the infilling of the Holy Spirit, that no man can cap what's on the inside of us. It's a river of living water welling up within us. Hallelujah. And it comes out. I was uh, at work. This was many, many, many years ago. I was working uh, Right after I'd come out of high school, I was filled with the Holy Spirit not too long. And my telephone, I was at my desk working, and the telephone was on the window ledge behind me. And we'd had, we were in revival. We'd had a great service the night before. I was thinking about it as I was doing my work. My phone rang. I just reached around, picked up the phone, and I said, hallelujah. <laughs> and I caught myself. I said, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. And my boss said, evidently not. Evidently, I had not intended to answer the company phone with a hallelujah. <laughs> I couldn't cap that thing and hold it down. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. And they commanded them not to speak. Don't talk anymore about this Jesus. And they said back, Peter said back, they said, well, you decide, is it right in the sight of God to hearken to you more than to God? You judge. So he said, I've got to obey God. 
Then they went to their own company and uh, they told them how, what they had been commanded not to speak and they prayed and uh, they said, Lord, behold their threatenings, but grant unto thy servant. Now here they've been threatened, threatened, that means probably with their life. And so here's their prayer. Lord, behold their threatenings and grant to thy servants that with all boldness. <laughs> so we're not stopping. Just give us some more of what you did the first time with all boldness, all courage, strength, all bravery, all confidence that we might speak your word, that we might tell it and utter it and preach it. Hallelujah. I want to be filled with the boldness of the Holy Spirit. Not uh, irrational, not erratic, not uh, having nothing to say, but when you speak with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you'll speak words with a life-giving sound. Amen. You'll speak words that will have carry weight and meaning and penetrate all the unbelief of a person's heart. And they said, Lord, stretch forth your hand to heal that signs and wonders might be done. And when they prayed, the whole place was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spoke the word of God with boldness. They were full of courage, full of strength. I tell you, when the Holy Ghost comes on you, you feel like you could whip a lion or a bear or a tiger or anybody. Hallelujah. Don't mess with a Holy Ghost man. There was a, there was a, uh, a story told to be a true story of a man, this was many years ago, he had gone to Chicago and he was a Bible student at Moody Bible Institute and he was spirit filled. And one night uh, evening in Chicago, it was after dark, he was walking down the street uh, to the Moody Bible Institute where he was staying as a student. And someone, oh, well, he's, it, the story was a great big man came up behind him, put a gun in his back, and told him to stick him up. Hands up. And uh, the man, it scared the man so bad that he started speaking in tongues. <laughs> he just, I mean, some things you just can't hold back. Startle me and see what you get, you know. <laughs> and he started speaking in tongues. And guess what? That great big man with that gun started running. <laughs> Woohoo! Amen. The enemy is afraid of you when you're filled with the Holy Ghost. My aunt, when I was a teenager, that brings this to mind, and uh, she had gone, we lived on a corner, and she had gone to the kitchen to get a drink of water, and she hadn't turned the light on. She was, and she looked in the backyard, and there was a man walking across our backyard and she hollered out at him told him to stop she said I've got a gun <laughs> she was spirit filled she didn't have any gun she said you better stop <laughs> and he froze she went out sat on him got his hands behind his back till the police came <laughs> oh hallelujah give me the Holy Ghost any day arm me I'm armed hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah now let's talk about the boldness of Stephen Acts 6 and 10. They were arguing with Stephen. They were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. That wisdom, I would call that boldness and, by, and the spirit. They, say they couldn't resist his spirit. He had, was anointed. And the council looked steadfastly. They saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Remember the scripture I read to you a few minutes ago that wisdom in your life will change your countenance. You will shine with the glory of God. The presence of God can be seen in an individual. And they looked steadfast. And then the high priest said, are these things true about you, Stephen? And if you read there in Acts, you'll find Stephen started preaching. Boy, they had a gun to his head. They, they, they had him before the council. He knew his life hung in the balance. And you know what he did? He started preaching under the anointing. Wham, wham, a left and a right and a jab. I don't know. If, <laughs> I, it probably didn't matter. <laughs> he was anointed. Hallelujah. And he preached. And when they heard what he preached, they were cut to the heart. Woo, it cut them. 
and they gnashed on him with their teeth. And he, being full of the Holy Ghost, he looked up into heaven and he saw the glory of God and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand. I've always loved that scripture because the Bible says Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. And when Stephen looked up and was being martyred, he looked up and Jesus stood up for Stephen. Hallelujah. And probably put his hands out and said, come on home. You're closer to me than you are there. Come on home. And he was full of the Holy Ghost. He cried and he said, Lord, lay not this sin to their account. Then we go to the book of Acts. And I, I love boldness. I, I, I'm asking God for more boldness. I want to speak up when the occasion requires it or demands it. I don't want to sit silent when I should have, not could have, should have said something. Amen. All around you today, people are talking and gossiping and saying and making statements. Listen, they don't mind criticizing each other or what you're, why should you mind? You said, I don't want to swim against the tide. You better, you might drown if you don't. Amen. Have you ever noticed people used to holler, be tolerant, be tolerant. And the ones that holler, be tolerant, they're not tolerant at all. They want you and I gone. Hallelujah. Now Saul of Tarsus, later to become Paul, he was saved, and he, when he was saved, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. He was on the road to Damascus, and he, he preached. After he got filled with the Holy Ghost, the Bible says he preached Christ in the synagogues. Now, I want to tell you something. If you go in a synagogue today and you start preaching Christ, that takes a lot of boldness and takes a lot of anointing. Amen. And he increased in strength and confounded the Jews in Damascus. And when Saul came to Jerusalem to join the disciples, they were afraid of him. All they knew was that he, they, last they heard, he was killing Christians. But Barnabas took him, brought him in and declared to them how he had seen the Lord and that he, the Lord had spoken to him, how he had preached boldly. He preached fearlessly. He preached with confidence, courage, and assurance, strength, and bravery. Are you that kind of believer? You say, no, I'm not. You can be. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. You might say, I have the Holy Ghost. Stir up the gift that's in you. Amen. Seek God. Read the Word. Get some ammunition. Get on one of those belts that's ammunition. Get ammunition. Get the word in you quicker and faster than ever before. Get ready. The war is on. The game is on. Saints, get ready, get ready, get ready. Paul was finally brought before King Agrippa. This was one of the, toward the end of his life. And he preached. Agrippa said to Paul, you're permitted to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself. I just, when I read that, I can just visualize it. He's probably brought in shackles and chains and the guards throw him up and he stands before a king sitting on the throne in royal robes and the king says, all right, you can talk for yourself. Can you see that man of God full of the Holy Ghost and power and fire? Said he raised his hand. Hands up. Everybody say, hands up. He raised his hand and he said, oh, King Agrippa, he said, I don't hesitate to tell you why I'm here. And he began to preach. He preached with great boldness. He preached with strength and might. He preached with bravery. He preached with confidence and fearlessness and trust in the God that he served. And I'll add this, and he loved not his own life unto death. He put himself out there. And you know what Agrippa said? Almost, Paul, you persuaded me to be a Christian. Almost. And I love this. I've never heard anybody say much about this verse. Of course, we've all probably read it at the end of Acts. But I love it because that's kind of, I like, I like it. Acts 28, 31. Paul dwelt two years in his own hired house, preaching the kingdom of God, teaching the things that concern the Lord Jesus, with all confidence. There, that word confidence means boldness. No man 
forbidding him. Here was a man that everyone had tried, that tried all along to kill him, to trap him, to ensnare him. They, he was at, uh, you know, uh, shipwrecked many times and whipped and, and beaten many times. And here he is, retired, living in a rented house. And people can visit him and hear the gospel and nobody's bothering him. I kind of like, that sounds good to me. Hallelujah. I like that. I really like that. Ephesians 6 and 18, it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication. But here's the key. In the Spirit. Saints, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, which we identify and call the baptism of the Holy Spirit, is absolutely necessary for the believer in this hour in the day that we live in. Amen. You need more than a verbal assent. You need a confirmation assent from heaven coming down on the inside of you. I promise you, you will be bold. I promise you, you will have something to say when the time comes. You know, the Bible says, don't you worry what you're going to say when the time comes. I'll give you what to say. You and I need to listen to the Holy Spirit. Have you ever sat and listened to a conversation that you wish you could interrupt? I have. And I just pray, say, God, give me something to say to these people. Give me something to say here. Let me, let, let me say something. Let me in some way give me an entrance that I can say something and get in this conversation and begin to witness for you. Amen. And he answers those prayers. God will help you. God will help you. And he said, pray in the Spirit and pray for me that utterance may be given unto me. Listen, pray for me that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly. I don't want to just go, remember? They said, what did you say? What did you say? Don't talk under your breath when you're talking for God. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Open, that I can open my mouth with courage, that I can open my mouth with confidence, that I can open my mouth fearlessly, hallelujah, to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I'm an ambassador in bonds, that I may speak boldly. I want to speak. How many of you say, I want to speak boldly? I want to speak boldly for God, hallelujah. And he said, I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. If we're spirit-filled, we ought, you say, I'm just shy. You can be shy when you don't have the Holy Spirit. After that, you're not shy anymore. I was so shy as growing up and as a teenager. and you know, I just, I couldn't hardly hold my head up to meet somebody. I'd shake hands with them and keep my head down. I was so shy. I couldn't, hardly, I couldn't talk. I could hardly say hello. I was just so, I guess, introvert, self-conscious, whatever. But somebody asked me, they said, what happened to you? I said, oh, that's easy. I got filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, glory. Oh, hallelujah. You know, I love it when the Holy Spirit moves in me. I feel it. And he moves in me with a shout. This morning I was praising God and just some things. God began renewing. And I started shouting. I just started shouting. I'm glad I live where I can shout. I don't know. I started saying nobody can hear me. I don't know if they can or not, I'm really, it's all right. I don't care. I mean, I don't want to be obnoxious, but I don't think anybody, I don't think I'm bothering anybody early in the morning. Later in the day, it's all right. <laughs> okay. He said in 2 Corinthians 7 and 4, Paul, in writing to the Corinthians, said, Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. He was very bold when he talked to the Corinthians. Very bold in his messages. He, he didn't hesitate to say, there's sin among you to the Corinthians and this is what's got to be done. And he, he would correct, he would discipline, he would teach, he would speak to them in love, he would also speak to them in correction. Listen, saints, we expect our children to receive correction when they're wrong. As a child, we expect that. Well, you know, the Lord expects us to receive correction too. I haven't met anybody, including myself, that's perfect. Of course, I'm working on that. And I know you are too. The word perfect really means mature. 
Amen. As we come to maturity. Now, Ephesians 3 and 11, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. In Christ Jesus, we have boldness and we have access to the Father in him. Hallelujah. Having therefore brethren, this is Hebrews 10, 19, having therefore brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Do you have confidence that you're washed in the blood and when you pray that you go into the throne room or do you boldly enter in? Do you boldly come to God? Well, we don't boldly come to God if we're not living for God. We don't boldly come to God if we're uh, compromising and living in sin. There's not much boldness there. But when we, our hearts are right, when we're living, there's an old song, when your heart's right, heaven belongs to you. You come boldly to God, to the throne of grace for help in time of need. Hallelujah. It, that's Hebrews 4 and 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and grace in time of need of need. I want to go down here to Proverbs 28 and 1. I love this verse and in closing I want to bring it out. It says the righteous are bold as a lion. Amen. The wicked not so but the righteous. Who are the righteous? The right doers. Those that choose God's way. That choose to walk with God. They're the right doers. The righteous are as bold as as a lion. You know, I never saw a timid lion. I never saw a bashful lion. I never saw a shy lion. I've only seen roaring lions. Woohoo! How many of you want to be a roaring lion? Let's stand up this morning. My God makes us to roar for his glory. He causes us to speak out in the midst of the vileness, the corruption, and the filth around us. Don't ever be ashamed of the Jesus that you've got. You need to know it shines on your face. Amen. Amen. Great and mighty is the God we serve, and God wants you to roar like a lion. Amen. Let it come out. In other words, be loud. And I'm going to use another word. I hope it doesn't offend anybody. Be obnoxious. A roaring lion can get obnoxious after a while. <laughs> Just keep on telling the truth. Be sure you're telling the truth. Be sure you can back it up. Be sure you're living right. And the angels of God will be your protection. I want to be a bold one. Woo! How many want to be bold? Raise your hand. I want to pray for you this morning. I want to pray a special anointing, a breaker anointing that will break what you have accepted. Some of you say, well, I'm just timid. Why don't you let go of that spirit of timidity this morning? He's not given us a Timidity is fear. He's not given us a spirit of fear, timidity. But he has given us a spirit of power, love and a sound mind. Are you ready to get rid of that fear of people, fear of saying the wrong thing, fear of doing something somebody will notice you? Let's get rid of that fear and let God's faith, glory shine on our face. If you want that, raise your hand this morning. Father, you see our hands raised to you. We ask you, I ask you now, Lord, I come against every spirit of fear, timidity in this house. I destroy your lies and put them under my feet right now. And I speak a breaker anointing. I break the yoke of bondage. I break that timidity that's held God's people in captivity, held them back from witnessing, testifying, praying for the sick, casting out devils. I break that fear in the name of Jesus. And I ask the angel armies to come in and assist everyone here. Go before us, assist us as we go forth from this place. Make us bold as a lion. Let us speak up. Let us shock and surprise and testify and glorify and exalt the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in our generation and to this generation. In Jesus' mighty name.
name. And everybody said amen, amen, amen. Shake off those heavy bands. Lift up your holy hands. Let's sing it. Shake off those heavy bands. Lift up holy hands. Let all of God's people praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. song. I want you to be back tonight. I'm going to preach on hands up. You better be here. You're going to get it. You're going to, get it. You're going to enjoy it. Amen. Be back tonight. Don't forget Wednesday night I'll be teaching on God's courageous people. Be here. Amen. God bless you as you go. Lift up those holy hands. Mm -hmm.